Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome I upload every Monday a new video and I try to switch up the more easy things to sew and the more difficult things to sew and this week I would like to make a chiffon dress and you see these dresses with all these waffles and I like them very much I uh, uh, people who watch me often know not by now um, so I got some inspiration uh, photos I always take some uh, uh, picture shots from when I'm watching YouTube videos so I'm not always sure where the pictures the dresses or the blouses are from uh, the left one is from Netaport I know that um, the second one is from a video from Josie from uh, Fashion Mumbler and the right one you'll notice as uh, Roxy from Roxoas. Uh, so what I liked was the left one, the blouse, has a really uh, new concept, it's something that you don't see often because it is a rather square neck, when you close it up but when you open it up you have this nice ruffle going down and uh, to the side and then you have a sort of v-neck uh, on the side and I think that's really special really different so I would like to make that and that means that we make um, I think just a square neck that is too high when you really close it up you can also make a round neck uh, I have to see what is what is best to do and then we have the closure uh, left from the middle and uh, along that opening we will make a ruffle going uh, across and then going down to uh, the waist and uh, also the sleeves I like very much I have lots of dresses without sleeves and I noticed that it, that is not always um, that functional because it's rather uh, pleasant to have sleeves, short sleeves or three quarter sleeves for some occasions and not always having your arms bare so I want to make uh, three quarter sleeves and then with uh, some elasticated uh, on, on, uh, elastic on the end and um, then you have some sort of ruffle also on the bottom of your sleeve you don't have to sew on because it, it gets ruffled because of the uh, elastic uh, and then for the skirt uh, I like that one that has Roxy on with the slits and it means you have a part in the middle and then the sides are overlapping to the middle a bit and you make it more or less uh, the way you like it and you get two slits and the slits she has uh, are a bit way too high for me so I will have uh, a bit less uh, so you can do whatever you like you just can make the overlap uh, more to the middle or less or you can sew it down more so that it won't fall open that much as she, she has um, and then I like the ruffles that the dress in the middle has that going down from the waist all the way down to the uh, seam to the bottom seam uh, and I think that's really nice just by sewing on uh, some scraps of uh, fabric and when you have chiffon uh, that ruffles up very nicely when you just sew it on uh, when you take it together I'll show you where we do it how you do that easily then you don't have to make ruffles first but just when you sew it on you can ruffle it up and you don't even have to uh, finish the edges I think also for the top you won't finish the edge of the ruffle because then you get that really uh, relaxed uh, look when you just uh, sew them on like that so I think we'll do uh, a ruffle uh, in the middle or the middle part of the fabric and a tool on the sides that are overlapping uh, and that's for the skirt, uh, if I have enough fabric, because that is always my problem, because I buy my fabrics before I know what I want to make out of it, so I often uh, don't have enough, so I hope I can make it midi length, that's my favorite length, uh, if I don't have enough I'll make it shorter, but we'll see what we'll do, of course you can make any length you like. Um, so that's the top, that's all the pieces, for the back, uh, I think we'll do it just plain and simple, normally I have the nice things on the back but now I think the front will be the most beautiful part of the dress and I think we just leave the, the back plain. So that's my inspiration and I'll show you now my uh, drawing uh, how we're gonna make my design. So for my drawing, uh, people who are new here uh, might not know it but I cannot draw at all, my drawings are awful but they are just a reminder for myself uh, what I want to make and I understand my drawing. So if you can't draw, don't worry, that doesn't mean you can design, that doesn't mean you can't make your own patterns or your own designs. Uh, it's just, it just doesn't look nice, but that's not a problem to design your own things. So um, what I told you in the inspiration pictures, uh, we're going to make that um, square neck. 
um, I think I will make it a round neck because then we have the possibility to also close the dress, uh, the top off. And uh, when you open it up, it will lay down. So um, I'm, I'm still debating what to do when we make it square. It is maybe easier to make, and I'm not sure if I will ever close it up. So I don't know if I need to make a round neckline. Um, the only thing is we need to make here a round neckline and then the left and the right is the same. So maybe we will just make it round because we need a facing because we have to put the ruffle in between. So let's just de decide now to make a rounded neckline. Then the closure is left from the middle um, because that's nice when it opens up. And then what I do, I just make a straight top because we cinch it in at the waist with an elasticated waist. So that is easier. Uh, to make, we don't need a closure then with a zipper or whatever, but just when we make this wide enough hip, hip width, then you can just get in and out uh, without a zipper or anything. We make rather wide uh, sleeves, like a bit of balloon sleeves, with also elastic here on the end. Then you get a nice ruffle here on the end of the sleeve. Uh, I like to make it quarter length, um, so just below the elbow i think that is nicest and because it's a very thin fabric that i have it's also not that warm when you make it like that and i also like to make the elastic not too tight because i hate when it's too tight around your arm then the skirt um will be water white in the front so just a little bit flat out and then we have this middle part and the two sides part going over and the more you put it over the less your slit will be so you can de decide yourself how much you want how, how wide you want your uh, side parts to be how wide you want your slit how high you want your slit to be and if you really don't like the slit to fall open then just uh, sew them together as far as you like and uh, then it won't fall open. I like to just put it uh, over it on top of each other and just leave it like this and uh, let it fall open as much as it is. And then on every part we will stitch on a, a strip of fabric as a ruffle because that gives that really nice detail and that takes together with the top with the ruffles here and the ruffles on the sleeve. And then for the back just plain and simple, just the top, just the skirt, not as wide as the front, just going a little bit out and uh, I think that will it will be enough uh, with this fabric that I have because I have this really cute chiffon, very thin, very flowy with a cherries and cherry blossoms on it. And I think it looks really nice when you make this more busy pattern. I think it's really nice. It's very flowy. Uh, also, don't be afraid to use chiffon. I will uh, while we're making it. I will give you all kinds of tricks how you can work with chiffon. I already had some videos about working with chiffon and it's really not that difficult of, uh, of a fabric. Uh, just it's nice when you have a good sewing machine because when your sewing machine sucks, your fabric will suck too. But then the fabric is not a problem, but your sewing machine is a problem. So you don't need an expensive one, but you need a good one. So make sure you have that or borrow it from someone just to see how it is when you have a good sewing machine. So that's what we're going to make. Now go on to the tutorial and you will need the uh, basic pattern top. So for the pattern making, we're going to use the basic pattern for the top. So if you don't have that yet, I will link down below the tutorial how to make this basic pattern. Um, and then what you do is you take another piece of paper, uh, pattern paper or whatever paper you have, uh, uh, newspaper or something is okay too. We can trace this um, pattern and what we need, we have to think how the pattern will be. So for the left part of the uh, top, uh, it is smaller, it's just until where the right part connects. Um, and what I said uh, in the former clip is that uh, there was a rounded neck, but that is not true. I watched the photo again and it was cut off at where the shoulder started. So I traced down the front pattern for the left one from the, where the uh, shoulder part starts. So this is the end of my paper here for the new pattern. So you trace down the shoulder seam, the armhole, and because we want the top to be as wide as the skirt, as wide as your hips are, you uh, make the top as wide as your hips. So you uh, measure it all the way down 
what your hip size was for the top and that width you're gonna take the whole side seam of the top so you're gonna extend the armhole to your hip measurement so this width from the mid front to the side is your hip width quarter hip and um, but now it is shortened because we start here at the shoulder point so this is your left part of the top then for the right part of the top again you trace that part out uh, mirrored of course and then you connect your new um, your, your uh, other side to the mid seam so this is the mid this was this pattern you mirror it and what we need uh, our left part ended here at the or starts here at the shoulder seam so this part the white right part of the top must be just a bit uh, further because we have to overlap the left part of the top so we're gonna make the uh, the end of this top here about two centimeters left from where the shoulder starts for the left top so we make here the marking and then we go all the way down and that is where our white pattern stops and um, so what I said before for the uh, rounded neckline we didn't do it here because we start at the shoulder seam we don't have to do it here because we can just uh, take it straight across to where the other shoulder here starts and then we just have a straight line it's easier to sew easier to make easier to finish and when we open this up we we'll close it down here somewhere when you open it up you have this nice uh, straight angle uh, hanging open so this is what your new pattern will be for the top you make it as long as where your waist is or just a little bit below so that it can fold over the uh, elastic so normally I give it around two centimeters extra in length so that you have some more fabric so when you've got it out you have these two pieces and when you fold the right one over open you'll see it falls from here the shoulder line it was open like this and then you have exactly that V that the photo had that we want to recreate and then we can put here a ruffle along the side edge so this looks fairly nice and then for the uh, back it's uh, just easy just take your basic pattern trace that down uh, and the only thing you have to uh, differ is just uh, making it on your hips hip width the all the side seam so make it just a straight line on this width so that's very easy just trace it and give it the top neckline then for the sleeve we want a nice white balloon sleeve like uh, sleeve and easiest to do is measure with your measuring tape the uh, curve of your armhole of your pattern mine is 26 centimeters when you make really a nice curve like this like it has it's 26 centimeters and then I take my paper and I lay down my measuring tape in somewhat the curve that I want it to have and then I measure where my measuring tape says 26 centimeters so this is about the curve that I want and then I trace it down with my marker and I go from the end straight down and this is the mid of my sleeve so we have to mirror this to the other sides too I make my sleeves uh, 38 centimeters and then the last five centimeters will be the uh, ruffle so this will be the place where the elastic comes in the sleeve to get it together so that's how you can um, draw down a sleeve like this just by taking your measure, measuring tape in a nice curve also measure around your arm if this width is wide enough for you maybe you want your sleeve to be wider if you have thicker arms then lay your measuring tape a little bit more flat that it gets a longer curve so you get more width to your sleeve so now i'm gonna mirror it and then i cut it out as one piece because that is easiest when you want to cut your fabric you will need your measurements because you need to know what your quarter hip is mine is 22 and a half so uh, I make the side of my paper is my mid back for the back uh, pattern uh, I measure down my 22 and a half that's my quarter hip 
and I want it to be midi length so that is 70 centimeters for me going down that way and I want it a little bit flared out but not too much because then I can save uh, some fabric because I need three uh, patterns panels for my front uh, and I want that to flare out a bit more so that can we can leave the uh, back a little bit more straight then the front will fold a little bit more over each other and that looks uh, very nice and it saves some uh, some fabric so I'm going to flare it out just a little bit I think at the end it will be around two two centimeters uh, adding to my quarter hip so that is not too much but enough to have a nice fold down so make a straight line flare those as, as much as you like to the length that you want this is your mid back and this is your waist of course I'm gonna cut that out too and for my mid front panel I made just a straight panel of 20 centimeters wide um, my whole um, width in the front so that is half my hip width is 45 centimeters so the mid part with the two flaps that are overlapping the mid part have to, has to be 45 centimeters together so I have 20 centimeters for the mid part I want the side parts to overlap and I want to overlap it around 4 centimeters then I don't get too much high of a slit I don't really like it like a bit but not too much so it's 4 centimeters overlap and because this is 20 I have 25 left of my 45 for two flaps so that's 12 and a half each plus the four of the overlap makes 16 and a half that are measured out here where my uh, flap should end and then I flared it out just as much as I could and I'll see uh, how much fabric I have if I give it, can give it a little bit more you can also flare out this seam a bit more if you have enough fabric then you get more overlap and also more flowiness so if you can you can do that but I just give this a straight line and only flare out the outside and of course you need this part to one for the left one and one for the right one and the mid part is just one piece pattern pieces now we're gonna cut them out and um, we also need to um, cut quite a lot of strips to make ruffles here along the neckline the front uh, part and the three long ruffles uh, along the skirt part so make sure you get a lot of fabric left uh, to, to cut them out they have to be around two times the uh, width that you need to have so when your skirt is 70 but try to make one piece of the ruffle uh, double 70 so 140 for all these pieces then you get the nicest ruffle if you have less that's okay too but it's nicest when you can make the ruffles twice the length that they are when you work with chiffon because it's very slippery uh, cut your pieces just in one layer or what I usually do because in one layer I don't have an overview if I have enough fabric so I always pin down the selfage so two layers on top of each other and the selfage I pin every 10 centimeters together so that uh, the whole parts cannot shift from each other and then when I put on my patterns I use a lot of pins for every uh, pattern not only on the outside but also just in the middle of the uh, pattern so that the pieces cannot shift from each other because chiffon is very slippery but when you know how to work with it it is no problem at all So now I'll do a recap of all the pieces that you should have now cut out um, and because uh, my chiffon is very sheer I also uh, cut out some um, lining and uh, I'm gonna use it I'll tell you for all the pieces how I use it because uh, sometimes I just sew it on and sometimes it's just separate but I'll show you what we have we have the back part on the fold so that makes it one part uh, and one lining and I have a very thin stretchy lining you see it's almost as sheer as the chiffon is but together it's really nice and um, so I cut that for this one one extra then we have the front right front part we cut that two 
and one for the lining. And I did that because um, when I just got it, we only use one, uh, we only need one. But when I put one with the lining for the sheerness, when you fold this open, then you will see the lining, and that's not nice. So I'm going to sandwich this lining in between the two pieces of the chiffon. And then when you open it up, you see the other nice side of the fabric. So this lining will be sandwiched between these two and then we do act it uh, as it is one. So that's for the white front. Then we have the left front. We only need one for that and one for the lining because this won't fold open. So we don't need two of the nice fabric, just one and a lining. Then we have the sleeves, of course we need two of them, of the chiffon. And then we have the skirt and um, as lining for the skirt I just uh, cut out, let's see, this is the right way, I cut out my uh, hip width because we have everything in hip width. And then the length that I want it to be, I took it 40 centimeters, that is for me just covering my butt. I don't want it too long because then the slits might fall open and you will see the, the lining. That's not nice. So just uh, not uh, in pieces or parts or what. I just um, cut out on the fold so that I have my width of my uh, hip. So that's for the lining of the skirt. Then we have the skirt back. That of course is one piece on the fold. And then we have the skirt sides. Oh, they shifted a bit. And then we need, of course, two one for the left, one for the right. And then we have the skirt mid part, and we only need one of them. So then we have all the pieces, and we need all a lot, a lot, a lot of waffles. And I cut my waffles eight centimeters wide, and I think that is nice uh, for the top and for the skirt. Uh, and just cut a lot of pieces of 8 centimeters wide and then we're going to use them and we're going to sew them on. And I have a question for you because um, I really have a hate relation with a rotary cutter. This is my fifth one. I bought it yesterday new because I wanted to make my stretch with the rotary cutter but somehow it doesn't work for me. This one is new so it should be very sharp but what I always have is I have these pieces that just stays connected you see that and as i said this is my fifth now and it, it cannot be that it is not sharp this one is new and with the other uh, i had the same problem that it's just not cutting straight and then i have to go on again and then i get strange cuts so i really don't know what i'm doing wrong maybe i don't push too hard because i i because of my health i don't have strength so i cannot really push very hard but it seems that you don't have to push too hard because I see some YouTubers making swimwear and they just go hop, 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 going all the curves like this. And you cannot do that when you have to push very hard. So I don't know what the problem is with my rotary cutter. I cannot do it. I think I'll take my scissors again because I have to cut a lot of these strips. And with this, it is just not fun. So if you have the solution for me, please let me know because I would love to use this thing. But it just doesn't work for me till now. So first thing what we're going to do is we're going to work on the white side of the top. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to make the ruffle that goes uh, along the side. And it goes from the where the uh, shoulder seam ends to the end of the mid. And then going all the way to the uh, waistline. And uh, the other ruffles I'll just ruffle on the fabric. But because this is in between I'm going to fold one of the pieces double. And then um, make a basting stitch all the length of the of the ruffle, and then you can easily uh, cinch it in by uh, pu uh, pulling on one of the threads. And when you've done that, you can uh, uh, pin it on the fabric. And what we do is we're gonna sandwich them. So when you have made the basting stitch, you're gonna sandwich the front parts and the um, uh, lining. By doing this, now I have one piece of the fabric, one piece of the lining, one piece of the facing. So that's how it must be. And now by sandwiching it, we're gonna put the one of the fabric parts underneath the hole 
pile and then in between we're gonna pin the ruffle so on top of one part of the fabric of the chiffon fabric we're gonna sew on the ruffle and then we sandwich these two parts on top and when we I made the basting stage for the ruffle and um, I made the ruffle twice the length that I want to put it on so then it's a nice um, amount of fabric to ruffle and I made it also eight centimeters wide as the other ruffles but now this one I folded double and then what you do is you uh, uh, pull on one of the threads it doesn't matter if it's the top or the bottom part but you just pull it on so that it gets ruffled And then you put the, the um, beginning of the ruffle where it begins here on the end. Or I see now I have to finish the ends of the ruffle. I have to do that first. So we could put the beginning of the ruffle here where we marked where the shoulder seam ends. Make sure you keep hold of your threads so that you can pull more if you need to. Pin it on the bottom fabric and then the other, the other end of the ruffle you pin to the other end and that is where the waist is. Make sure it is not twisted. You pin this hole here hole at the end. Also on the bottom fabric. And then you're gonna ruffle it up so that it is nicely the same width as your um, fabric. And when you've done that, you put on top of that the other fabric piece and then the lining piece. And then you're gonna sew this whole piece from the waist to the shoulder seam. And also put these two in between, or one for, for this side, the other one is for the other side. Also where you put the ruffle. On the right height, you put this one too in the same seam. So this is what it looks like with all the layers together. We're going to sew here and there. And then we flip it over so that this will be in between the other two chiffon pieces. Oops, I forgot to press record when I sew this on. So I'm going to show you now how it is when you flip it over. <coughs> Take the two parts on top. Flip them over to the other side and then remove your pins. I think I felt one more pin here somewhere. I'll find it back later. And then you have here nicely your ruffle <coughs> along the whole side that we're gonna flip over later on. So it looks very nice. I'll give it a good press that this is nicely pressed down because we're gonna wear it like this. And here we have our tie. To, uh, connect it to the other front part. It looks very nice like this. It's a very cute ruffle and uh, yeah, it's nice. So now we're gonna sew on the um, back part. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna put them right sides together and sew this neck hole seam and then we flip it over then this is nicely finished. And then we treat this just as one piece, the lining and the chiffon together. So that's the next step. take our left part of the top and also we're gonna sew the chiffon and the lining together right sides together make sure that you give all the pieces a nice press and yes also chiffon you can just press 
just put a, a thin cloth uh, between your uh, fabric and the iron and you can really place, put, press this seam very nicely flat and down. First press it open and then press it flat and then it looks really nice and polished. Also this seam from the right uh, front and the seam with the ruffle press it very nicely because then you get that um, experienced uh, professional look. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sew the shoulder seams and uh, for the right one, uh, the left one, we can sew the chiffon uh, going on into the lining and that gives a really nice uh, finish. So what you do is you align the attached seam where the uh, chiffon and the lining are attached from the back and for the front and you align them up exactly that they are really matching here. Right sides together of course and then you pin the shoulder seam of the chiffon and then the shoulder seam of the lining in one row of course. This is the lining, then we take the chiffon, make sure you only have the chiffon and no, uh, oh, the lining and not also chiffon in between, so separate them very carefully. Pin the lining together. And then sew that all across. And when you've done that, you can open it up and then you have a nicely finished shoulder seam with no visible seams. So we're going to sew that first. And I did the same for the other shoulder. The only thing is that here at the back attaching to the lining you have the lining and the other fabric of the chiffon because we have on this side two uh, parts of chiffon. Now that's all done. Now we can sew the uh, side seams, right sides together of course. <coughs> sew them all the way down and then we can sew our uh, sleeves. And for the sleeves there that's just very easy. Just sew the side seams together, right sides together of course for every sleeve. So the side seam and the other side seam and then you're gonna put the curve into your armhole and when you've measured and cut it right, you can just pin it in and sew it on because you don't have to ruffle or something or gather it because it should fit nicely. You could also make the side seam an invisible seam, but I don't feel the need for that, so I'm just going to use my serger and just close this up. Pin in the sleeves. Just mark where your mid is of your sleeve. Align that point with your shoulder seam and align the seam of your sleeve with your side seam and then distribute the whole uh, fabric along the armhole. So now the top is almost done. We're gonna hem the uh, sleeves and we're going to do that with a walled hem and that means that you fold the seam in as small as you can so it, it's only uh, two millimeters or something really as small as you can and then iron that down 
and you do it all the way around and then again you fold that piece in and when you iron it it's more easy to do because then it stays in shape and then you give it, can easily give it the second turn in and then you pin that down and when you do it like that by pressing it in with your iron uh, the first and the second time then you get a really nice and crisp uh, line to pin and then it's very easy to sew it all around so we're going to do that for the hem of the sleeves then we're also going to do that for the skirt parts because now we're going on with the skirt and for your mid part you do the two both sides we give a rolled hem and then for the two uh, for the one mid part and for the two side parts you give the mid part so the part that's folding over the mid part this side you also give a rolled hem because this side we're going to attach to the back of the skirt so we will finish this when we sew it together to the back so that's for the next step We have all the skirt parts nicely finished. Iron down that seam that you made, and you get a really nice crisp finish. And then we're gonna sew on the ruffles. And what you do, you take one of the ruffle strips and you pin it down here on top of your skirt part and at the bottom. Make sure it's at the same width of your uh, seam. And I um, put it a bit more to my seam that is to the middle and a bit less to the side because this is going on the curve around your hips so I like it more to be more to the middle of the of the skirt and then what you do is you pin the top and the bottom then measure out uh, just about where the middle of your ruffle is and then where the middle of your skirt is and then pin them together and like that just all line them up until you have uh, your whole ruffle roughly uh, pinned on it it doesn't have to be precise it's just to make sure that you get uh, the ruffles evenly distributed along the whole uh, skirt so just put it down bit by bit and then when you put it under the sewing machine <coughs> you can scrunch it up for as much as fabric that you have left for that piece so it's uh, pretty easy to do. You can also um, bake a basting stitch and then ruffle it in and then sew it on. But I like this method more than the ruffling piece. I, especially when it's such a large, large piece, I don't really like uh, to do that. And also then you have your basting stitch um, in view because we're going to sew here on top of the middle of the ruffle. And I only want my uh, seam visible or my stitching visible with which I uh, attach this to my skirt so I don't want to have basting stitches or something in between so I like this method but you can do it any way you like
now we have all the ruffles sewn on on the three pieces of the front and um, now we're going to sew the back skirt to the two side pieces because they have the side seams so you put them right sides together and sew the two side seams and also what you can do is sew the uh, side seam of the um, lining skirt and um, let's uh, so going to show you have just one side seam the other one is all the fold so that's easy to do so now we're going to assemble all the pieces uh, and what I did I took the side parts of the skirt and I folded over the mid part with the overlap that we made in the pattern the left and the right one and to make it easier I uh, stitched them down here on the top so that this is one piece now uh, I also did that for the top where the overlap is in the front I sewed that down so that th that is secured then I put my lining inside the skirt and I first going to pin that down that these two are uh, together secured and then we're gonna flip this into the top so that we have the whole waistline attached so you put your whole skirt into the top right sides together of course and then you can so the whole waistline seam with all the pieces together and what I also did is I uh, for the top especially because we have a lining here and one uh, front part is three double so I uh, made the top stitch all the way around so that all the layers are together now and they don't shift from each other so that is nice to do then <coughs> it's easier to sew all the parts together because it's a lot of fabric laying on top of each other and the chiffon is very shifting and uh, walking away so make sure you uh, secure them very good because otherwise you can do it again um, I sew this on only on the top I'm gonna see when I wear it if I need to uh, stitch it down that it doesn't fall open too much but I can already uh, also do that later so I'm not gonna do that now I'll see how if I have to do it when it's uh, all together in one piece that all the layers are nicely attached finish this whole uh, seam and then measure how uh, wide you need your elastic to sew on top of this seam and just um, make a circle out of it pin it down to the sides pin it down on quarters and uh, if you want on eights and then uh, sew this on with a zigzag stitch and then you have ni a nicely elasticated waistband um, what I also did is I um, made my lining a bit shorter because it was way too long and I want the slits to fall open and of course then you shouldn't see the lining so I uh, pinned down my uh, slits till uh, 22 centimeters from the waist down then you have in my length a nice open falling slit but not too high and I cut my lining so that it just stays bef uh, above where I attach it so I don't attach the whole uh, 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 what's it called where it goes over, over each other but just at the end I give just one top stitch to uh, to secure them together for the, both the slits uh, and then what I did I measured how wide I want my elastic to be for my armholes or for my sleeves um, I make a circle of that I knot it now but I'm gonna sew it together in a circle and also then with a zigzag stitch so that onto your sleeves I made mine the sleeves are here <laughs> down somewhere uh, I make my uh, six centimeters from the bottom from the seam of the sleeves on that height I make my uh, elastic and then it's just just above my elbow so that's a nice uh, place to put your elastic you could put it up then a little bit if you want to but it's a nicely fit because then the six cent with extra falls over your elbow and then you have nicely three quarter sleeves so that's the last piece and of course you have to hem uh, the skirt with the same world hem as we did before uh, I will at first and it's more easy to make the uh, world hem and then the dress is finished and I'll show you the end result And 
this is the dress and it's very floral, very <coughs> summery. I like very much how it turned out. I think I say that every time when I make something. But I really I like these uh, loose, lightweight, uh, flowy dresses. I think they're very comfortable to wear when it's hot and I think it always looks so stylish and so nice and um, I'm glad I have now one with sleeves because as I said I hardly have uh, any dresses with longer sleeves for summer then uh, and I think it's it's you can easily wear in summer these dresses with uh, long sleeves because it's such a flowy such a uh, airy uh, fabric that you don't have the problems with long sleeves that it's too hot and uh, I think it looks very nice when you have some sleeves um, even if you don't need it because you have nice arms it's, it's still more stylish I think when you have something covering your arms and I think it looks very nice I did um, sew in the uh, slits a bit they're still when I'm standing is, uh, like this then you don't see it but when I walk they really fall open and I'm not really sure if I'm happy about it so maybe I will stitch it down a bit um, uh, when you wear this invocation, it's no problem of course, but on normal days maybe it's just a little bit too much. Uh, what I also did is I made a belt to uh, cinch in the waist, well you don't have to cinch it in because it has elastic, but I like it when I have just something to tie around, uh, it gives me more um, stability for the waist, I think I like it more when it's a little bit stingy in. and what I really like is the unfinished waffles, maybe you thought that I was crazy that I wanted to show on the waffles without finishing it, you see all the fraying here, but I must say I really like it, it makes the dress uh, less stiff, less um, so, well, not so again, but less well, stiff is the, the good word, it makes it more relaxed, more uh, casual and still it, it really looks very nice for a wedding or uh, some occasion, I think it looks very nice and, and uh, put together and uh, I like this this front because I had never seen it before, it was the first blouse I saw with this detail and I think it looks really different, really nice and um, yeah I'm really happy with the result also with the fact that we lined it, it turned out really nice like this and because my lining is very thin I also used it for my former um, skirt that, that orange one with that leather look, uh, it's the same lining, it's very stretchy, it's very thin but still it keeps away that your uh, dress or your garment is too sheer and uh, that's the nice thing of this lining, that it's still very light and very airy and still it does, isn't see through, also here down the bottom you see, maybe you can see it, the lining is still here and that's just enough to cover what you want to cover and the rest can stay open and uh, I'm very happy with this result um, and as you've noticed I sew a lot with chiffon um, I know a lot of people don't like to sew because they think it's too difficult so if you have any problems with chiffon let me know uh, ask me a question what your problem is and I will get back to you uh, because I, I really like this fabric I must say the next project will also be in chiffon I will take it down, uh, I forgot it of course again so I will take it uh, <coughs> when I'm uh, ready talking um, but it, I, I think it's not really a difficult fabric to sew with but you have to watch some things and in this video I'll already give you some tips uh, how to uh, use chiffon, what to do, what to take care of when you use it I have my hair or something on my nose, I'm, it's all the time itching I don't know what it is but it's annoying well okay uh, so uh, if you have any problems with chiffon just let, uh, let me know in the comment section down below I will get back to you uh, and try to help what your problem is uh, because really it, I don't think it is really a, a difficult fabric what you should do, although it is chiffon, always iron your garment always iron every seam, every hem immediately after you have made it because that uh, makes it really more easy to, to, do, uh, to do and to sew uh, also with hems, so uh, rolled hems are pretty difficult when your fabric is slippery but when you sew, uh, when you uh, iron, with steam really hot and when your fabric can take the hot temperature just put a cloth in between you can really press it down and it makes the sewing afterwards a lot easier so don't be afraid when it's chiffon, when it's a sheer fabric just take a cloth in between and press it hot with steam and it takes the, the work totally away for the problems with sewing, so try that and uh, you'll have really less problems in, uh, in sewing and so for our next project <coughs> we'll make a kimono um, and because I don't have that much fabric for me it will be more um, 
a blouse. I think it will be just around waist length because I don't have that much fabric, but you can make it as long as you as you want. And already have, I think, three or four kimonos, so I don't really need a lot, another long one, so I'll make mine shorter. But it's this beautiful uh, beige, a little bit yellowy chiffon with a gold with gold stripes in it. I'm not sure if you can see it. This is too bright, I think. Well, I'll give you the, the close-up where we're gonna make it. So, but it's um, a beige, a bit yellowy uh, chiffon. It's very nice with the gold stripes. And uh, what we're gonna make afterwards, and the people, the people that are here from almost the beginning have seen this one before. Um, at the beginning of the fall, I was doubting whether I would make another summer dress or I had to skip over to fall. And I put the question on what you wanted me to make. And uh, I got also a lot of requests for this white um, lace, well it's a knit lace, uh, to make a last summer dress. But it didn't turn out to be the one most uh, asked for. But now we're going to make it. It's a very nice cotton... Um, well, um, knitted, I think, or maybe, yes, it's knit, um, lace, and <laughs> it is stretchy, of course, and it's very nice uh, fabric uh, to make a dress all out of, of course, so it will be a long one, a very flowy one, and this will be very nice, uh, I think, to wear in summer with, um, I don't know if I'm going to line it or if I'm just going to leave it like this, that you can wear it as a cover-up. Uh, or just uh, put an, um, uh, what's the name, don't know the name, a long camisole underneath it. I'm not sure, I will think about it uh, depending on how I'm going to make it. So this will be the next one after the kimono. So lots of things to make. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. If you want me to make something that you're not sure about to make it yourself or to design it yourself, also leave me a comment down below and I uh, I'll can make that for you in one of the next times and then you can get the, the a pattern that you uh, that you need. And this was the chiffon dress. I'm very happy with the result. I hope yours were nice too. Uh, you can of course also make this just out of cotton or whatever fabric. It doesn't have to be chiffon but it happens to be that I like chiffon so this was another chiffon dress. So thank you so much for watching again. Uh, I'll see you again next week. Next Monday there will be the kimono tutorial. And um, well, thank you so much for watching. Bye.